everyone, welcome. This is uh, Ardon Tonska from Firely, um, and I will be the, the moderator of this session. Um, uh, we will keep a close eye on the Q&A, so please uh, ask your questions over there so we can forward them to the questions or answer them in the Q&A section. Um, well, Sebastian, if you're ready, you can uh, take over the screen and start your presentation. Okay, I will do so. Um, it is nice. Oh, where do we do? Sorry. Ah. Yeah, no. Share screen. Here we go. Um, okay, and let's, sorry. Okay. I think yeah. you uh, you all see my yes. screen, no? Yes, we do. You're oh. all good to go. And I'm not muted, so the classics are, are uh, done and over with, and we can start. Um, yeah, welcome all. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, Vivian and I will be uh, have prepared something uh, to present to you about uh, mapping Pyre to OMOP using open source tools. And uh, basically, yeah. Uh, just starting, maybe uh, Vivian, you want to uh, introduce yourself. My name is, in the meantime, Sebastian van Sandijk, clinical informatician by Odysseus, Odysseus Data Services, which is a company working in, in Odyssey and OMOP uh, community on uh, both software and uh, ETLing, as well as uh, uh, maintaining the vocabulary for, uh, for the coordinating center at Col Columbia University. The vocabularies in OMOP CDM. I will talk about it uh, a little bit later. Um, and basically, we prepared together with uh, Cloud uh, Vivian a little uh, journey uh, for uh, yeah, mapping fire to OMOP. Vivian, do you want to say something? Or introduce yourself? I think. Not okay. Now, Vivian is a lead interoperability solutions engineer and working with a lot of uh, engineers and also customers on the Google, Google Cloud platform. And uh, Odysseus and uh, Google Cloud platform have worked together on, on uh, putting some of the open source tools of, of, of the Odyssey community on, uh, yeah, on the cloud. And First, Sebastian, I, uh, yeah. I heard. I, I think uh, we don't. We haven't have the right settings for Vivian. So I'm checking if, uh, in the meantime, if I can. Get the right settings to let okay. Vivian yeah, mute herself. Didn't try that out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And otherwise, uh, yeah, she she should be able to uh, to back me up at least. So <laughs> I need her. <laughs> uh, oh, there you are. <laughs> Hi. Sorry. No, I think once we started uh, the recording, it, it I lost permissions to unmute myself. Um, ah. So yes, that was a great intro. Hi, everybody. I, I lead interoperability at Google, and uh, really excited to be doing this this fast today. Okay. Then, uh, then we go uh, further. Um, basically, what we like to do today is, uh, yeah, take you along in a little, little journey that we did uh, on, on converting EHR data into OMOP CDM. Uh, we used, as I said, a fire to OMOP converter that, that the Google Cloud Platform uh, uh, facilitates. Um, and basically, I tried out for, for this, for this um, exercise, I tried out a little uh, specific scenario that, that is not common in, in the OMOP world, so to speak. But I think it's, it's a scenario where fire is uh, yeah, uh, really put to, put to good use uh, in, in, in the, for the use case that uh, OMOP is working on. Um, so I think uh, by, by we will cover a lot of ground, uh, but, but this scenario where we suppose uh, assume that there is a single CDM, which is a OMOP database, so to speak, uh, that is fed or populated from, a, from, from EHR data, where typically you have multiple source systems and modules in one hospital, for example, and you need to co convert them to OMOP CDM. And uh, as one of the steps, uh, you can have a fire to OMOP mapping to, to do this conversion. That's what I uh, wanted to tell you about. Um, before that, I will also tell you a lot about yeah, OMOP itself. Um, I'm not sure if, if, uh, if there are people that are familiar with OMOP at all. And uh, I have noticed that uh, 
like in OMOP, there's ma not many people that also know FIRE, and in FIRE, that's not many people that also know uh, um, OMOP. So I would like to get into a little bit uh, detail here, especially if you look at the uh, yeah, scenario or the pipeline that I sketched here, um, especially because uh, if you have, uh, it starts at the, at the left with the EHR uh, environment in blue, um, a fire server or facade or API, you can tell, uh, as it's called today. Then the converter, which is fed by concept maps, and basically it then feeding into an OMOP CDM on BigQuery, for instance. And the interesting thing that I wanted to focus on is that in, in a BigQuery, in a, in a CDM, there's always uh, many vocabularies also that's part of the OMOP CDM. And um, the scenario that I work on is, uh, is basically uh, can we then use this, uh, what is in terms of the terminology, knowledge or, or um, available mappings, can we feed that back into the uh, fire to OMOP converter, this, this little ball uh, circle here. It's a, yeah, we'll talk about it uh, in, the, in the presentation. I will talk a little bit about how we set up the pipeline or the, the pipeline to be, so to speak, and show a, little, uh, a number of examples where uh, the conversion is, is not that easy maybe, uh, and even talk about uh, uh, cotton pain points. Um, uh, but I think that there are uh, enough examples that, uh, for me at least, to go into the future. And I hope that I can uh, uh, take you along uh, in the journey a little bit. Um, yeah, OMOP, what is it? Uh, officially, uh, just a little bit of history. I will quickly go through this. OMOP is, uh, uh, is an acronym that stands for Observational Medical Outcomes Partnership, which was originally a program in the US working on uh, patient safety and drug utilization studies, science, scientific endeavor, and uh, using uh, building an infrastructure and or a common data model for these kinds of uh, studies. And uh, that common data mo model came to be the OMOP CDM, the OMOP common data model. Um, as to the community, uh, since 19, 20, 2014, it became uh, called uh, Observational Health Data Science and Informatics Community, and we pronounce it policy uh, to, uh, to emphasize that it is a journey that is uh, not long uh, finished uh, for now. It is a journey where uh, a, a number of different disciplines work together to, to yeah, help generate evidence, basically, on the basis of observational data, data that is in uh, point of care uh, systems mostly, uh, and that evidence that should be the, uh, of high quality and, and uh, reliable, etc., so that it can promote better health decisions and better care. So that's a practical goal, and to um, yeah to achieve that goal, the OMO, uh, yeah OMO Odyssey community works on uh, yeah, large scale uh, network studies, federated analysis model. Um, and, and does also a lot of data harmonization, uh, focusing on reusability of data on the, on the one hand, but also on reusability of, let's say, analytic methods, phenotypes and stuff like that. And that's even more um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, useful, uh, maybe. Um, yeah, the OMOP common data model, I will tell about it a little bit. Uh, by different, yeah, it's a technology agnostic model, uh, but most in the in the open science community, most people work with like uh, Postgres and uh, R and, and um, yeah, uh, uh, platforms and frameworks like that. Um, but there are many uh, also bigger companies, pharma companies, for example, that uh, use all kinds of different uh, commercial software and technology platforms, DBMSs, etc., including of course the uh, the Google platform with BigQuery, which is uh, coming uh, up uh, as also for the customers of Odysseus Data Services. Um, that's how we found each other, of course. Um, basically, uh, um, yeah, I will not go into many of the tools that are there. Uh, these first three, Bart Rabbit, Tusagi, and Data Quality Dashboard, basically are part of the ETL or support ETL process. Athena is uh, the place where uh, you can see the latest vocabulary uh, uh, of, of OMOP. And Atlas and Arachne. Atlas is, is a, a tool in, in the Odyssey world that supports study design and cohort definitions and things like that. And Arachne is a, a collaboration platform uh, built by Odysseus Data Services uh, that supports network studies, federated network studies. If you are, after this call, uh, talk, uh, interested, please look at this link here and uh, you can read the Book of Odyssey for the people from uh, Asia. It's also in Korean. 
uh, and maybe a lot of languages as well. Not that old, but uh, a very interesting read, I think, uh, if you uh, want to know more about uh, how things work in, in the Odyssey and all that. Yeah, just to stress, it is about generating evidence. Om Obsidian, um, yeah, it, it sounds in some cases, and you will see the, uh, the similarities in a moment, uh, very similar to, um, uh, to also the fire resources in general. But yeah, you always need to keep in mind that basically the goal is really different. It is about generating evidence, it's about the analytic use case. Um, what, what OMO basically does to, to get to this reliable evidence with, with lots of different patients, the uh, level data in different sources. Basically, it's, it's with this model, basically, you want to have re reproducible uh, um, uh, studies or anal analyses. And one way to, to, to get there is to say, okay, we have a, a common data model. And at least from there, there's a straight line between uh, uh, the patient level data, the PHI, and the evidence that you generate. Um, so you can have, and that's a federated model, you can have different databases all uh, built up according to the uh, OMOP common data model, different researchers, but if they uh, put the same uh, data in, in the CDM and the same analysis, then you will, assure, you will be sure that the evidence is also identical. Um, basically, I would say that with the exercise that we present today, uh, uh, we use FIRE a little bit to make maybe uh, uh, yeah, split this this first segment, the data standardization ETL segment from yeah, from the source data to the CDM. Split it also in two and have a basic basically uh, for the uh, second part of of this first segment a more uh, generic approach towards uh, populating the CDM. Whereas there will always be the first steps will be very messy because the source data <clears throat> in each our situation at least will be messy uh, in in. Uh, in a number of ways. Um, so basically, fire is is an addition, I would say, here uh, in this scenario. Um, in order to yeah make make a little bit more clear where what Omopsidium is actually uh, about um, and and where there are the agreements and and the differences. Basically, what you see here is the data model for uh, the Omopsidium, the Omop common data model. And you see that this person-oriented or patient-oriented uh, uh, model where every uh, yeah, factual clinical data tables, these are all tables, are connected to the person, also somehow interconnected. Uh, it's a very, uh, the visit occurrence is basically an encounter in, uh, in FIRE. Uh, every uh, um, event in that in healthcare practice can occur or can happen to a patient uh, basically should be connected to a visit occurrence. Uh, um, and that's that's basically uh, yeah one of the um, uh, foundations, you know, building blocks of, of the of the records in, in an OMOP CDM. You see these clinical tables, those are about the facts, uh, yeah, the events that happen in, in, uh, with a person that, that is in interaction with the healthcare system. Basically on the other side, these are kind of der uh, derived uh, tables. So we about a, a metadata uh, table. Basically this table here is a very interesting one uh, or tables I must say, because especially the concept table, what is here is basically all a list of all the standard and non-standard concepts that are in that are known to Omopsidium, you know, to men even. And uh, in in these other tables that are in the standardized vocabulary, so to speak, this this stack. Um, basically, that together builds up uh, um, a vocabulary model, so to speak, terminology system that combines all kinds of known. Uh, token and, and, and proprietary standards, source raw, raw source standards, and, and also SNOMAD uh, uh, as, as a generally uh, uh, widely used um, international standard. And, and basically, they, these vocabularies, as they call, are called in OMOP, uh, are basically uh, there with all kinds of hierarchical and, and uh, other types of uh, inter uh, yeah. Uh, what do you call it, uh, relationships in between them. And that is basically behind the screen, uh, behind the scene, but uh, that's used for analysis, uh, but also in ETL, uh, uh, at least for quality purposes also. The model itself, as I said before, it's, it's uh, this part at least, it's optimized for uh, uh, analysis. And 
yeah, in, in all aspects makes heavy use of vocabs. And what does that mean for the Omobsidian? I wanted to show that. Basically, this here is the stack. Huh? You, you see here 3 million. Um, basically, what you have here is all vocabulary stacks up, stacked up in one table. Uh, uh, some are bigger, the, the blue one here, and some are smaller like this. Uh, and they all, all these vocabularies have a, a vocabulary ID. So uh, you have here SNOMED, ICD9CM, uh, RxNorm, LOINC, MESH even. Uh, all kinds of vocabularies that may be uh, uh, useful. Uh, SEAL, this is a, a national version of the ICD. Oh, no, no, sorry, that's not, not pardon me. <laughs> I, will, I won't uh, <laughs> interpret things here. Um, but what, what is happening here is that you uh, can have both standard concepts and non-standard concepts. Basically what uh, OMOP does for uh, the different uh, domains here, these, these tables are called domains, for procedure occurrence, drug exposure, condition occurrence, and all, all that, that kind of tables. Uh, there are, um, so to speak, standard, cho yeah, uh, standard vocabularies chosen. So, for example, for the domain condition, SNOMED is a standard vocabulary, which you can, can see by the, by the S here, that this is a standard concept. This is a record in, in this big table, concept table. This is another record. It has the same name. But if this would be the Dutch version of the ICD-9, for example, it would here say atrium, uh, atrium fibrillation instead of atrial fibrillation. Um, in ICD-9, this is also a condition, but the class ID would be different there. And the code, uh, the concept code in the ICD-9 for the same concept, or similar concept at least, would be 427.31, whereas the, co the SNOMED code would be this. Basically, in OMO, we, we get all this uh, source yeah, data from the vocabularies, but you use only the concept ID in the tables, which means that if you look at the tables, and this is a bit basically a, an OMOP CDM. One of them, uh, in this case, a, a COVID uh, a test database. So it's not real data, but you see that you have very little patient identifying uh, uh, data. What you see here, for example, is in the condition or occurrence table, which is about diagnosis, so to speak, that for uh, a patient or person ID uh, set here, six, 680, you have uh, basically one is the atrial fibrillation, which uh, this patient suffers from, uh, uh, known to suffer from since 1998. Uh, it's still going on, you can see. Uh, it is, uh, this, this information is coming from, a, from an EHR encounter. And it is uh, basically uh, recorded in a separate visit from other conditions that the patient uh, uh, has. Same, so these are also conditions for this patient. And these visits are all uh, have all um, uh, been the basis, so to speak, for other conditions, which I'll talk about later. Here, uh, you see this is, again, the SNOMED code, so the source uh, code. Uh, and this is the source concept ID, again, the, the same uh, reference to the SNOMED concept ID in the concept table. And basically, if you do analyses, you can, uh, if you do harmonized analysis, network analysis, you will use this one. And if you want to do uh, local, um, uh, uh, you can also use your CDM with, with only the local sources. This is the condition source value. It could be, uh, this is condition source value, sorry. It could be this value that you use and um, in, in case of the um, ICD-9 or, or your own local hospital diagnosis code, it would be another uh, number. You can basically use the same analyses, but then uh, only for your own data. Uh, interesting so, things. So, yeah, Sebastian, I think we have a related question to this, a uh, question yeah. from David. Uh, are you doing local code translations to the standard ones? Yeah. <laughs> that's a short answer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, basically, that's part of the ETLing. Uh, it's not you, uh, used, you cannot see it here, but if you look uh, at source to concept map, for example, there's two mechanisms for that. During an ETL, basically, you, uh, uh, you basically uh, connect, for example, all condition occurrence to one of the codes that are in the concept ID. But it can be that there's no, no one found. Uh, you can always use your source values uh, uh, in, in the drug condition occurrence. And then it could refer to uh, a code in the source to concept map, which is basically a version, the same similar setup as, the, as this one, but then with the mapping from a source concept or value to uh, a standardized uh, uh, concept. And basically, that is also a source 
for updating uh, at some point the, the vocabulary uh, in general. So, and, and in case of the ICD-9 and 10 and uh, those non-standard concepts basically, don't, don't those non-standard vocabularies basically, the mapping is available in the, uh, in, in uh, let's say in these, in the map with the maps to relationship, for example. So it's done uh, both centrally and locally. Uh, is that clear? Yeah. Um, for the rest, just to, to make the data a little bit uh, more lively, uh, what you see here is that this basically, the, oops, sorry, no, come on. This concept here, uh, sorry, the second one, uh, which is basically for a short period, one, one visit. This is COVID, oh, sorry, this is fever, and this is the concept for COVID-19. Uh, COVID so you can see that uh, during this hospital visit, this person had this known com comorbidity, and these are the, uh, let's say, conditions diagnosed uh, uh, during the, the stay in the hospital here. Um, this gives a bit of, of basically every uh, clinical uh, table has a similar setup where you have uh, especially uh, a concept, uh, a person, uh, a visit occurrence, which is important, uh, all referenced, referenced, and most most likely uh, the most clinical tables have a start date and an end date, which is can be uh, populated or not, so depending on the meaning. Um, yeah. That, that, that basically gives gives you a view, a flavor of what 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 an OMOP CDM is. And if you have this this structure uh, and this database available on your own premises, that's basically the uh, assumption also of of, uh, of OMOP. Basically, you can use all kinds of uh, tools, and you, there is also tools and, and uh, uh, let's say guidance on on ATL documentation, but you can have also. All kinds of that do all kinds of data quality checks uh, provided by the community. And you can have uh, protocol design, protocol design, study designs, uh, tools use tools and methods that are defined by the community. Basically, there's a lot of researchers, data science developers, clinicians, all kinds of people that basically work together on improving the methods to generate this evidence that I was talking about. Um, yeah, basically. Uh, this is an example of uh, the, one of the tools that we have also on the cloud platform with the dishes and, and the GCP. Uh, basically, this is uh, again atrial fibrillation here. Uh, atrial fibrillation is used in a, to, to define a cohort of people that have been diagnosed uh, with atrial fibrillation. And uh, you can then reuse uh, the concept that here behind this will refer to a standard concept and then to non-standard concepts that are in the vocabulary and also all kinds of uh, source concepts that are uh, linked to this uh, this concept so in the end i think this is small but you will have 60 uh, uh, source codes basically that that, uh, that will fit under this seemingly one diagnosis but it's all sorted out by the by the tooling based on the omop cdm and uh, you can have the, the, this, this basically uh, supports all kinds of uh, complicated uh, cohort definitions and phenotypes. Um, to give an impression, there's a lot of observational characterization studies in, in the other serial community, but also all kinds of uh, population level estimation studies and also uh, patient level predictions that are, uh, yeah. Uh, basically done more and more and also uh, yeah that means also that the, the methods and techniques and tools are being uh, optimized to to support it more uh, uh, yeah more extensively um, and again uh, often using the vocabulary to to make it happen uh, behind the scene but um yeah i don't know if, if we should take some questions now uh, yeah, yeah we yes we have uh, one related question to omap still that's, yeah. uh, is it possible to use OMOP for analysis of imaging data? Uh, yes, I know. I mean, we, we don't. There, the, the metadata there. Uh, there is, I think, at least a working group that works on this. Um, I'm not sure how far that is, but you can can imagine that the metadata uh, around imaging that that it that is uh, um, that it would be part of the um, OMOP. Um, uh, yeah, database. I'm not sure how far it is, but it's something that you can easily check on odyssey.org. <laughs> uh, I'm quite sure that there are people working on it because this type of thing is, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, so that's my, 
There's right. actually an open source um, Odyssey DICOM to OMOP converter that I linked into the question as well, if folks okay. want to yeah. look at that. Yeah, then definitely there are, but I'm not, I'm not sure how far the, the study field is, but uh, there's certainly people working on it. Um, For those who are in the um, medical imaging or, or one of the medical imaging sessions earlier in fire depth days, the, um, the, the general consensus is that you would store the metadata and then uh, have a reference to the diagram to, to a medical image such as URL. And it yep. would happen the same way in, in this, in this uh, data standard. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, uh, yeah. No, there are no. Oh, sorry. Okay. So there, there are no further questions. Okay, then I'll just uh, go on. It, it's something that uh, uh, let let me stress that OMOPCDM it started with uh, drug utilization and it's developed uh, more mature there, but I would say that uh, it's it's basically. There are a lot of branches of, of uh, network studies where OMOP is being extended and, and further developed uh, and redesigned in some cases uh, with on, on top of the, the core that is uh, of, uh, yeah, uh, present now. So it's, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, let's leave it at that um, and go to um, the next uh, topic or basically why we um, why we here. No, we have not much time anymore. Basically, so I will uh, make a little bit of uh, pro, uh, speed here. Basically, uh, I, I wanted to indicate, we work with the scenario. This is a typical uh, audition, uh, sorry, policy uh, ETL process with a number of tools mentioned here, Usagi, RabbitNet, WhiteRabbit, Achilles, Data Quality Dashboard, which ends up with the quality uh, OMOP CDM. Uh, in the scenario that we want to present here, we want to go for incremental update. And you can think of maybe uh, having a, a CDM uh, that needs to be updated at some point because maybe there are new patients or you are interested, uh, a certain study is interested in, in patients with a specific disease uh, that are already in the EHR but not yet in the OMOP CDM. Maybe you can update then the, uh, the CDM. Uh, uh, extracting specific, yeah, these patients, these patients with specific diseases. Uh, another use case here uh, would be if you need for a specific study, specific outcomes or lab results or medications or that kind of thing that are in a in a different subsystem, so to speak, of the hospital and have not been ETL'd uh, up until now. Um, basically, the proposition here is to say, okay, we want to. Um, take basically, uh, for example, lab data uh, that are maybe already mapped to fire, that would be uh, even the case, uh, but at least uh, have, have them locally mapped to, to, uh, to a fire server or facade, uh, input them from there in a, a fire to OMOP converter using the, uh, yeah, basically the existing, for example, from the source concept map uh, table that is already in the CDM or from the vocabularies, uh, vocabulary tables themselves, and uh, use that input to uh, generate yeah, new records or updated records for the CDM. Why would you use FIRE there? Yeah, basically, uh, that would be a question that's really uh, important to answer, in at least in the OMOP community, in the, in the FIRE community, it may be uh, self-explanatory. Uh, self but I think the specifically uh, the most uh, important things here that, that um, you saw the, the, the complicated path between uh, source data to OMOP or, or, yeah, to OMOP. And basically, FIRE basically is a connection with raw data. Uh, OMOP has no um, generic means to do that. Uh, and FIRE is basically very powerful in that. Also, uh, if you look at the source system, the, the medical record or the surgery record or the lab access examples, these systems, in my experience, are less uh, able to really um, uh, extract data with the proper annotations and provenance information that you need, basically. But you can, uh, by, by extracting in certain ways or doing a little bit of process uh, 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 sensitive extracting, that kind of thing, you can do a lot of uh, ex yeah, uh, uh, metadata generation uh, uh, using FIRE to store the metadata uh, connected to this raw data. 
Um, and another thing, that's that's another reason. And, and the third reason is basically that if you have fire here in the middle between, uh, let's say, uh, OMOP and FMB, HR and the CDM, basically there are a number of converters already available for the lab, for example, the H HL7V2 uh, uh, medication has also uh, a number of uh, um, uh, structured uh, export formats, so to speak. And th those things, you can really reuse it, I think, by saying, okay, uh, if you go to fire, then from there you have then you have there the local uh, quality check and review. That's very important. It remains very important even if you use uh, an existing uh, fire conversion. After that, you can do the uh, conversion for fire to OMOP and then have the quality check and and maybe a quality cycle to feed back into the, the mappings. Uh, that's the other uh, reason for the future. Uh, I would say that if you have a, such a convertible, uh, configurable converter, I think that these fire concept maps sh should be able to to be populated basically directly from the vocab tables in OMO in your own CDM. So you have here your first ETL has done the quality checks, and and people in in the practice have said, okay, this is this is according to uh, how we work or how we use the information or how we uh, interpret or register uh, things and if you have that uh, uh, reviewed and approved then basically you can use it in this in this pipeline uh, yeah rather um, um, easily and, and have this incremental update uh, in a controlled manner even if it's automated so to speak um, yeah there are however uh, certainly a certain uh, pain points coming from the differences, the, the discrepancies between the fire and normal data models, so to speak. Um, I've listed here the, some of the fire resources and, and uh, basically yeah, most of the relevant domain tables. There are in total 20 domain tables. They are corresponding to the yeah, some of the fire resources. You see that patient and person would be quite similar. There are some uh, differences. For example, a name is, uh, is a, mandatory in, in the patient results but in person it's it's not uh, is it it's not mandatory no yeah that's often uh, used at least um sorry uh and and in uh, omop domain uh, person you need basically a birth date and a gender and that's not always available in fire resource um, the other one is this encounter a visit appearance and very logical correspondence uh, condition and condition appearance seems to be the same. If you look at uh, the statuses that are, uh, I think, there. Um, what, what, where it becomes complicated is, is with all the non-mentioned uh, uh, resources on the prior side, but also, for example, with medication administration, dispense statement and request, uh, where uh, there, it, it's always an issue also in, the, let's say, normal OMOP uh, ETLs. But what is important there, uh, uh, the drug exposure table in, in OMOP is uh, looking for facts. Has a person, uh, to your knowledge, been exposed to a certain ingredient and a certain uh, drug? Well, administration would be the best fit for that. And dispense statements and requests would be lesser and lesser um, um, yeah, factual, so to speak. But you can use the information, but you have to uh, uh, then map it differently, of course. Um, I have here also, you see that pardon me, observation here is both in observation and in measurement. Uh, basically, uh, measurement is, is more like the, um, in, in OMOP, the laboratory measurements, the more the official uh, kind of um, observations, if you will. Whereas observation in OMOP, that's an important thing, is basically uh, the last resort. You can basically put anything and everything in an observation. This, uh, and maybe it's it's always also good to, to do that if you don't know what it should be. Put it in an observation, and, and that's another, uh, uh, would be even a, a best practice. Let then the, uh, the concept mapping decide in which domain uh, something uh, needs to be recorded. And that's basically a, a, a good practice in the end, but that cannot always be done. But that's, so hey, I will, you will see an example later. One, one thing only is that observation period is among the uh, clinical uh, data tables, uh, domain tables in OMO. But basically, to be honest, uh, it is a derived table in the sense that it uh, captures the information about uh, the period in which a patient is being observed uh, from 
by the health system. So, for example, if you can be registered uh, by, by a GP in the Netherlands, and that can be between your, uh, when you moved to a certain uh, area, a certain village, and when you moved out of that house to another city or village, then you uh, left this GP, then the observation per period for the primary care is all these years, even if you don't know, if, if there's no uh, actual uh, visits. But you know that if there had been a GP uh, visit in that period, it should have been in the in the CDM. That's basically what the observation period says. Important things, and we will look at the examples. Uh, whereas OMOP is only interested in facts, uh, uh, FIRE has also care plans and other um, uh, and, and plan definitions uh, that is not important to uh, to OMOP CDM in the end. It has also different statuses uh, where um, yeah. Procedure can be not, it can be planned only, then it should not be uh, converted into an OMOP record. And you have also a history. And in, by definition, OMOP is only interested in the latest, latest version. So you can use it in a pipeline, for example, when you say, can I override what is there with a new updated, uh, for example, procedure or, or medication or whatever? Uh, because when it's uh, corrected, you know, then you can use in the pipeline, you can use the history information, of course. Um, to, to yeah, approve the, the override. Um, an issue that we will yeah, we'll, we'll show you, uh, fire resources are used and implemented in various ways. And that will be, yeah, be difficult in, in mapping, but also converting fire to, uh, to OMOP. What we did quickly is basically, we took a fire of the OMOP converter, uh, I'll put the links here, uh, we set it up on a local machine, uh, maybe later to deploy in an actual pipeline. And basically what we did, we took uh, transaction bundles, uh, catch requests from uh, the happy reference server, SGU3, uh, because the current fire to OMOP converter was that. Um, uh, and it, it helped us uh, get some nice, yeah, almost realistic uh, uh, data. And basically we tried it out, uh, what does the converter do, review the output and reconfigure, reconfigure the conversion logic or the mappings in the concept map. Uh, that may be uh, good to explain. The fire converter is basically, uh, if you look at it, uh, uh, basically based on, on yeah, but how can I put it quickly? It's, it's basically a conversion engine uh, uh, making use of whistle. It is, uh, like, and this, the transformation libraries, like this, this is under the hood. Uh, basically, the, the pipeline, the, um, the converter that we use basically is a pre-configured uh, library uh, like this. Uh, and you can edit the conversion logic in the files that are in this uh, folder that I mentioned here, project, the project library. And we use that, for example, to, uh, because Current version on GCP is basically OMOP version 6 and Fire uh, STU3, uh, I have to say. Sorry. Um, sorry, yeah. Just uh, a little bit about that. And then um, there are actually two questions that I think would be interesting to cover while we're here. Yeah. Um, uh, essentially, for those, uh, what what is being kind of shown on the, the screen is an open source conversion. Um, it's a configuration based library. Um, so kind of similar to the fire mapping language for those who are familiar with that. Um, it, it just allows for, it's a, um, kind of an easier way to do a, uh, a CDM transformation, especially a CDM transformation in um, a complex JSON object that's fundamentally going to a CSV object because OMOP is a flattened table. Um, which can be one of the reasons that that folks use it, and so I think it's an interesting, um, an interesting time to kind of go into uh, one of the questions that Will had was, do you think the Fire community will develop its own Odyssey-like tools or convert to OMOP and leverage the actual Odyssey tools? What do you think would be better for the communities overall? Um, and I, I have thoughts, but I, but I'd love to hear your answer first, and then I can uh, I can add on. Uh, you're asking me, yeah, I would say that um, I think that it would be a very, um, would be an addition basically to, to what happens in the Odyssey world. Um, but especially for the moving parts in, 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 in different use cases, for example, where you actually 
want to know if, for example, a source uh, is, is, is fit, for, fit for use in a, for a certain study, or uh, when you do patient counts, do I have enough uh, patients for, uh, for a certain cohort? Or when you want to share or maybe yeah, uh, bring your uh, results even from a study or from an analysis, even if it's, for example, a, um, a decision support um, um, uh, prediction kind of thing. If you want to bring in your um, uh, your results back to the point of practice, then then I think it would be very uh, useful. As I said, uh, for the first part where you do the ETL, um, that and that's basically what you're focusing on with your uh, focus on the flat, flattening of the of all these structured and hierarchical uh, um, uh, data models. I think it it can be useful, but in the end. Um, there, it, it should be tools, so, so to speak, that, that uh, really give an opportunity for um, basically the, the custodians of the data or the clinicians that uh, generated them in the source uh, to be able to review them. It's never an automatic process. I'm not sure if that's uh, uh, included in your thinking, but that, that's, I think, uh, most importantly here. Yeah, I, uh, I fundamentally agree. I think um, one of the things for those who are available yesterday during our pub talk, yeah. um, Graham, Graham Reeve basically said, you know, fire is meant to be that raw data format. It is meant to be coming right out of a, uh, you know, clinician's hands into a fire server, ideally. And for mm -hmm. analytics purposes, that's not necessarily, you know, it, it needs to be cleansed and, and flattened a lot of the time, et cetera. And, um, you know, I think for those reasons, there's always going to be both. And um, they're, they're since there will always be both, there will always be tools in both. I um, am of the opinion that um, w when I think about kind of, for example, where how, how ML um, or how machine learning pipelines are built, mm -hmm. usually what we do is we do a fast fail. So we would try a, you know, a regression al algorithm mm -hmm. just to see how far we can get as kind of, you know, do we have enough data? Do we have the right data, et cetera? And, and that kind of fast fail testing is really hard to do in fire um, specifically because we really we're, we're, we still have like rudimentary you know uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. functionality and so i think both of them um, are very necessary going forward and i think the fire to omop conversion will become more and more common as the way to flatten fire and do yeah. you know meaningful bi analytics uh testing on top of yeah and then and then you have uh, i think with the experiences from the odyssey tools and then community uh, they know what they want to test uh, to make for example to uh, have actual good validations of, of different uh, ml models etc what do you do in the training what do you do in the um, uh, the, yeah, the actual uh, execution phase that, that kind of thing is to there's a lot of experience already in, in what scientifically would be uh, high quality versus uh, um, a risk, uh, especially when you have multiple sources from, from multiple contexts. Um, I think for I will, time reasons, I need to continue. Is it okay? Um, I was going to say, we have one more question if you want to continue yeah. or if you'd like to answer the, 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 the question with two minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's two minutes flat. Okay, yeah. I wanted to show a little bit of the of the mappings that we did. Maybe um, this is uh, and it, this give it gives some some uh, uh, yeah. Two minutes flat is too too little. Um, but this is the type of input and output that that we get. Uh, and uh, I, as you can see, there are a number of things that we still need to uh, work on. But this is basically what you what you get uh, from the fire converter, a fire to OMO converter, and basically. If you have uh, uh, used the mappings, uh, for example, uh, uh, here on the on the drug side, and you see that the UMLS here is this non-standard concept where you have the, the source value in your CDM, and uh, because you know that Rx norm and that is here, where is it? Here is the uh, the standardized um, yeah vocabulary. You know that you can uh, look up uh, basically the concept ID uh, for this drug uh, directly. And that is the way uh, that you can actually use what is already in the CDM to, to pick the right uh, mappings and, and basically have a very quick conversion into, uh, uh, yeah, basically all of data. Just, and then maybe uh, this other question. Uh, I had some 
considerations further. But uh, what is the other question then? The other question is: um, Would you envision uh, would you envision ever using the CDM uh, OMOP as an operational data store, or is this more for analytics? Yeah, I think operational data store. Uh, we we just had it. We had the same similar discussion uh, beforehand. Basically, Odyssey and Eden and and uh, uh, these communities are uh, really uh, have a science, strong scientific emphasis. Also, in terms of uh, what type of evidence do we want to generate? Uh, basically, uh, going for uh, let's say the the observational equivalent for the clinical trial because of the methods, because of the large scale. Um, uh, in practice, there are a number of parties that already use it more operationally. And I'm also uh, certainly uh, playing around in my head with a number of uh, operational, uh, let's say, more outcome monitoring in a region with um, different sorts of uh, healthcare providers. Um, uh, maybe even uh, hey, there's also cost data if you want in the and also uh, eff efficacy of, of care, for example, you can do uh, in the OMOP, I'm sure. Uh, well, the data model is there. Uh, probably you need to extend the vocabularies to capture the real uh, things, uh, outcomes and, and costs and things like this. Um, but, but, and you need to develop the methods. But uh, I think that, that uh, let's say the OMOP um, um, Odyssey community is, is very experienced in developing and keeping developing um, uh, all kinds of good and best practices in this kind of thing. So yes, I'm certainly, uh, uh, it, it would be a different kind of CDM. For, for researchers, for example, it would be uh, uh, very difficult to work with a CDM that is uh, changing every day, so to speak. But as you see in this uh, incremental ETL uh, uh, scenario, um, yeah, you could do that easily in yeah, real time, near real time uh, updates. And I think especially for, uh, let's say, um, uh, capacity planning or, or uh, um, yeah, all kinds of things, efficacy of, of care, outcomes, even personal outcomes also that not, not, not necessarily medical. I think that uh, there's, a, there's a lot to gain here with OMO. Okay, Sebastian, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we uh, run out of time. Yeah. But um, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And perhaps you would want to go through the Q&A uh, for any leftover questions afterwards. Sure. I will do that. Thank you all. Nice. Okay, Thank thanks, you. and we will. Oh, and Vivian, of course, you as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, Sorry. I'm uh, basically a moderator on this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Then uh, enjoy the days, and okay, see you in the same. next one. Bye bye. bye.